Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal returned home this evening after wrapping up his four-day state visit to India. Premier Dahal has called his India visit a complete success, saying that he held the national interest supreme while discussing the bilateral issues with the Indian side. Prime Minister Dahal has also stated that he has been enthused by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's positive remarks regarding resolving the border dispute between the two countries. Good evening, I'm Abhudesh Shrestha, and these are the headlines of the hour. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal returns home wrapping up his India visit, says he is excited about Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's assurance of resolving the border dispute. 17 more communities and one more language identified through the recent population census. Population following Hinduism and Buddhism decreases. The government prepares to impose tax on fruits, vegetables, hotels, flight tickets from the upcoming fiscal year to ease managing sources. Business persons worried that the increase in tax in tourism sector will affect Target. And Sadabatu defeat 3 1 Army 2 1 at the Martyrs Memorial A Division League. Three star and APF settle for a one all draw. Church Boys blank Jawa Hill 3 0. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal has stated that Nepal and India have agreed to resolve disputes between the two countries, including the border dispute, through diplomatic efforts. Premier Dahal also informed about extending an invitation to Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to visit Nepal. Speaking at the press conference held at the Thiruvan International Airport upon his arrival from a four-day state visit to India, Prime Minister Dahal stated that he was excited that, Indian, that his Indian counterpart Modi expressed positive remarks regarding resolving the border dispute between the two countries. Dahal informed that he had openly put the issue of border dispute with Premier Modi. Prime Minister Dahal said that understandings on long-term trade in electricity, air route permission, establishing fertilizer industries among other issues were positive. Dahal claimed that his visit to India was fruitful and a base for trust has been created at the leadership level. While he was in New Delhi, Prime Minister Dahal held talks with Indian President Draupadi Murmu, Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar, and Prime Minister Narendra Modi. During the visit, a seven-point agreement was inked between the two countries. An agreement on long-term energy trade was also reached between the two countries during Dahal's India visit. 17 more communities have been identified through the recent population census in Nepal, while an additional language has increased. Based on the 12th population census, the increase in population that speak Nepali, Bajika and Awadi are as their mother tongue has decreased the population that speak other languages as their mother tongue. Likewise, data has indicated a decrease in population following Hinduism and Buddhism. According to the data of the recent population census conducted in 2021, the total number of communities has reached 142, which was limited to 124 a decade ago. Likewise, the number of languages spoken in the country has reached 124 with the addition of one more language. Based on communities, Chetri comprises of the highest population with 4.398 million, which is 16.48% of the top total population. Population of Brahmins of Hilly region has reached 11.29%, Magar 6.9%, Tharu 6.2% and Tamang 5.62%. Likewise, the population of Bishokarma has reached 5.04% and Muslim 4.86%. Statistics show that the population of the Newar community has reached 4.6%, Yadav 4.21% and Rai 2.2%. Pariyar, Gurung, Takuri, Majar, Teli, Limbu, Chamar, Harijan, Ram Koiri and Kushwa comprises of more than 1% of the total population while the remaining communities are less than 1%. The community that comprises of the least number is Nurang, as only 36 individuals of this community have been identified. Out of the total population of 29,164,578, the highest 44.86% speak Nepali as their mother tongue. Likewise, the second most spoken language as mother tongue is Maithili with 11.5%. 
Likewise, 6.24% of, of the population speaks Bhojpuri, 5.88% Tharu, 4.88% Tamang, and 3.89% Bajika as their mother tongue. The population that speaks Nepali as their mother tongue has increased by 0.2% within a decade, while those speaking other languages is declining. Likewise, the census shows that people following 10 different religions reside in Nepal. The highest 81.19% are Hindu, while which was recorded 81.3% a decade ago. There is a general call on the concerned authority to adopt required measures to protect communities and languages that are on the verge of extinction. In our public voice segment, today we have asked people in several provinces regarding ways to preserve mother tongue. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Public voice. राज्य ले चाहे प्राथमिकता दीना पारियो इसको लागे चाहे सरकार ले चाहे बजट छुट्टे उन्हें पारियो सब बंदा पहले ता सब पे आपनों भाषा प्रयोग करन पड़ता स्थानीय तो हमारे पाठ्यक्रम निर्माण करेरा हर एक पाठ्य पुस्तक में हमरो हमरो भाषा पानी उल्लेख कराऊं न पड़ता शिक्षक को कोटा पानी ये उठ स्थानीय सरकार ले व्यवस्था करें वह मात्रे त्योच्चे भाषा अगाड़ी पढ़ने सकता पहले तो अपना बाल बच्चा वाला शिक्षा उन्हें पढ़े अपनों मात्रे भाषा यो पठन पठन को लाइए चाहे ये वाला व्यवस्था कर देते राम रो उन्हें राज्य ले के ही ना करे आप वो हरु सक्रिय भर के ही हो देना जति पनी भाषा बीत हरु सन वहाँ आरु को ध्यान जान वापसे और परिवार में आम बुवा ले अपनो मात्री भाषा बोल दीने वाले वाले सजिले उनसे बच्चा ले सिक्स मात्री भाषा को लाइ The government has prepared to impose tax on fruits, vegetables, hotels and flight tickets from the upcoming fiscal year, citing ease in managing sources. Tax imposed on the import of agricultural produce has been viewed positively as it will promote homegrown agricultural produce. However, traders and experts have criticized imposing tax in the sectors that promote tourism at a time when it has just begun picking up pace. The government in the budget of the upcoming fiscal year has removed excise duty on 340 goods while it has imposed VAT on 170 goods on which tariffs were not imposed. Tax have been imposed on fruits, vegetables, flight tickets and luxury items. 13% VAT has been imposed on agricultural produce and flight tickets while 2% tax has been imposed on luxury items. Traders meanwhile say that the move will have a negative impact at a time when the government has a target of bringing in 1 million tourists in the ongoing year 2023. As per the international regulation, tax cannot be imposed on flight tickets. The International Air Transportation Association has a provision that prohibits imposition of tax on flight tickets. Majority of the tourism businesses do not have that number since travel agents that have annual revenue of less than 2.5 million rupees must be registered in VAT. The government has imposed tax on apples, avocado, kiwi, cherry, strawberry and blackberry among other fruits. Likewise, the government has imposed tax on potatoes, onions, bananas, beans and corn. Apples worth 710 million rupees and potatoes worth 86.7 million rupees were imported in the previous fiscal year. It's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. But before that, let's take a look at the results from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we had asked you, why have irregularities intensified in the corporatives sector? 54% voted for A, absence of monitoring, 37% voted for B, managerial lapses, and 9% voted for C, lack of awareness. Here's today's question. What should the government do to promote the Nepali film sector? Your options are A, adopt film industry friendly policy, B, establish film city, and C, search for international market. The voting is on, type NEWS, select your option A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. And it's time now for the international update.
Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi today visited the scene of the country's worst rail accident in over two decades. Preliminary investigations have revealed that the Coromandel Express train involved in a horrific rail tragedy in Odisha yesterday entered the loop line and crashed into a goods train parked there instead of the main line just ahead of the Bahanagar Bazaar station. The coaches of Bengaluru Haura Superfast Express capsized after crashing into the coaches of Coromandel Express that had scattered on the adjacent track. While Coromandel Express was at a speed of 128 kilometers per hour, Bengaluru Haura Superfast Express was running at a speed of 116 kilometers per hour. Sources said the report has been submitted to the railway board. The loop lines are generally 750 meters in length to accommodate full-length goods train with multiple engines. The two trains were carrying around 2,000 passengers. However, none of these accounts was officially confirmed by the railways. While a thorough probe is underway, none of the authorities has so far talked about any possibility of sabotage. Modi's administration has launched high-speed trains as part of plans to modernize the network, but critics say it has not focused enough on safety and upgrading aging infrastructure. According to Indian Railways, its network facilitates the transportation of over 13 million people every day. But the state-run monopoly has had a patchy safety record because of aging infrastructure. India's deadliest railway accident occurred in 1981 when a train plunged off a bridge into a river in Bihar state, killing an estimated 800 people. Sports News. South Dabata Youth Club defeated Tribun Army Club 2-1 to climb to the fifth spot of the Martyrs Memorial A Division League table. In the match played at the Chasul ground in Lalitpur today, South Dabata opened the scoring through Shiva Subedi in the third minute. Navyud Shrestha converted a penalty for Tribun Army in the 29th minute to level the match at one all. Navyug's initial spot kick was saved by Sadhubatu goalkeeper Abhishek Baral, but he scored through a rebound. Deepank Raj Singh Thakuri converted a spot kick in the 63rd minute to seal Sadhubatu Youth Club's 2-1 win over Trivan Army Club. With the win, Sadhubatu have climbed to the fifth position of the league table with 32 points. Trivan Army are in the ninth spot with 30 points. In another A Division League match played today, Three Star Club and Armed Police Force Club settled for a one all draw. In the match played at the Dasrat Stadium in Tripurashar today, Mani Kumar Lama scored from outside the D box, utilizing a pass provided by skipper Navin Lama to open the scoring for APF. Sunil Tamang scored for Three Star in the 87th minute to level the match at one all. No more goals were scored, and the teams shared points. Three Star are still in the relegation zone with 28 points. APF have climbed to the 8th spot with 30 points. In another match played today, Church Boys United blanked Jawlakel Youth Club 3-0. In the match played at the Dutchrich Stadium, Church Boys opened the scoring in the injury time of the first half as Anjan Bista converted a spot kick. Ashish Choudhury scored two goals in the second half, one in the 88th minute and another one in injury time to seal Church Boys United's convincing 3-0 victory over Jaulakhel. Church Boys lead the league table with 44 points while Jaulakhel are in the third spot with 37 points. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.